medical equipment in Zambia is not a, a widely known career. As in this hospital, I'm only alone doing all the repairs on all the equipment that is in the hospital. My name is Nyongan Lungu. I'm a biomedical equipment technologist at Kito Central Hospital. The hospital is a 500 bed capacity. The, the major challenges that we have here in terms of repairing equipment is one, the training, lack of tools, uh, lack of spare parts. Uh, if you are alone, it's quite difficult for you to do preventive maintenance. With enough labor force as well as funds, preventive maintenance is nicely followed. Medical equipment is very expensive to buy, hence we rely upon donations. And these donated equipment are not as effective as one would expect. You would find that our junkyard here is heavily loaded with absolute equipment because of spares. Medical equipment spare parts are not made in Zambia. You have to liaise with the manufacturers of these equipment. A lot of time is taken in order to procure these spare parts by the hospital. And most of the spare parts are expensive. Due to inadequate supply of medical equipment to the hospital, most of the wives do not have the appropriate equipment that they require for them to deliver a particular service. This piece of equipment is a research stair. It's very beneficial to us as midwives, especially babies. They, well, immediately they, they are delivered, they are hypothermic, the they, they, they temperatures is very low. So this helps them to warm them up. So when this is broken down, mostly it makes our life difficult. When it's busy and the women are delivering almost at the same time, and there's only one resource there. So it gives us a challenge on to where to put those other babies. So when this is broken down, meaning that our baby will, will have some complications, which may lead up to death of the baby. And the students at Nortec here are learning two types of things. On the one hand, general technology topics like electronics and mathematics, and on the other hand, biomedical um, related topics such as medical instrumentation, but also management processes in the hospitals and even um, regulations. They do both workshops, practical work as well as theoretical work. If you look in the hospitals, then one thing that is needed for a BMAT is technical skills. But the other, if, they, if you don't get involved in the management processes, then you will not have a chance to improve the situation of the equipment. A lot is related to this management skills. Procurement, budgeting, making a vision, and making a plan, evaluating where we are going. The full life cycle of equipment in the hospital. Most of the equipment, they just come by surprise. You are just told, no, there's a truck that has come from Osaka, it is offloading this particular equipment. Can you be there? How the transactions were done, where it was imported from, who is involved, you don't know. That is actually a major problem which we have in terms of medical equipment. Because you can't plan in advance. There's uh, two types of students at Nortec. One type is, is straight from the secondary school uh, with an interest in, in often an interest in technology as well as in medical healthcare. The other is people that are already, the other side is people that are already working in hospitals in Zambia. They've joined the hospitals with an elect electronics background, but they do not have the biomedical background which they can get here. Uh, this is a biomedical workshop at the Dollar Central Hospital. This is where I've been working for the past 10 years. And as you can see right now, we have quite a number of pieces of equipment that are here. And we have three. And the ones that are, you can see right now are just two of them, the radiant warmers. They've been brought here for repairs. Uh, they've been here for some time because we are waiting for spares. It's very, very challenging. Uh, you know, for us as engineers, our pen, like maybe if you look at a writer, it uses a pen. For us, it, the tools, you just, you can't do anything without, without a tool. And I think that's one of the things that is uh, maybe causing most of the, 
equipment, not to be worked on on the right shortest possible time. The lack of tools. Before I came here, it was more of corrective maintenance. Always you work on an equipment when it's down, and because of lack of spare parts, we always just let a machine run until when it breaks down and then you fix it. I've learned a lot, not only on maintenance of equipment, but also on management of that equipment. There are so many things that I need to do that I was not doing. Having been trained and having all that knowledge and just having the zeal to come back for work, that would be very, very good. But you know, coming to an office where you have no tools, uh, the space is not adequate, it this brings a lot of frustrations. But you find you bring in somebody who is coming with that kind of zeal from school and then they're not able to, to show what they've been learning. Find that maybe somebody might even leave and go to a private, a private institution. So for us as government to keep our people within, I think it's good that we, we, we prepare for, for them. Yeah, we prepare for them so that at least we become effective in our delivery of uh, fixing and maintaining equipment. One of the uh, elements of the course is to go on attachment in a hospital. That means they stay in a hospital in groups of four or five for three months and in that time they learn a lot of practical skills. So often the attachment of a group to a hospital brings a huge boost in maintenance in, in the hospital. Maintenance of equipment starts to become really on the agenda um, for big improvement that is needed there. During my industrial attachments we actually put to practice what we had learned at school. We had a hands-on experience with tools, with the equipment there. We fixed as many equipment as we could and we prepared a schedule, maintenance schedule, plan, plan preventive maintenance that was being followed at the institution and it is being followed at the moment right now. I seem to notice around the workshop, uh, you, you, you begin to wonder if this is a biomedical workshop or an electrical workshop. Uh, there's just too many, too many general stuff in here, appliances, and I don't know about that, but this, is, this should not be the case. You should only be finding medical equipment in here, which should be very easy for even the, the maintenance, the, the medical, biomedical technicians to maintain. With the coming up of the training at Norte, I think that will assist a lot in the leaving some of us. If I can have uh, maybe three more extra technicians or technologists, I can divide them according to speciality. So that would really help. I'll be very happy to be posted to a hospital like this one, Kito Central Hospital. Uh, the institution, it being big, is a challenge for me and I, I like challenges. So I would say we are pilot engineers that we just began and I think we are setting up a platform for our friends that are coming behind us. Okay, we've started up uh, last year a train the trainers program here at Nortec. At the moment we have uh, two foreign lecturers, of which I'm one, uh, and we're working very hard to create all the materials that are needed according to the curriculum for this course. Um, we need, in the sustainability sense, to transfer this into new lecturers that need to be trained here and that are being trained here um, to take over in the next year or so. These guys will be instrumental in taking over the lectures. If you look at the total um, uh, training program that we do, I think we can already see it is effective. We have, have at the moment uh, about 95 biomedical students in Zambia, which before didn't have anyone trained. I think uh, the, the, the program should be continued, should be encouraged, should actually promote other institutions, other learning institutions, take up the program and um, educate um, and motivate youths like me so that they can take up the program and help out in the health service delivery. As the course is going on, I think more and more things are going to improve. It's a very, very good start and we are really grateful. I've been working as a trainee, but now I'll be a qualified technologist. I'm very, very proud of that. It's a great achievement for me and I hope to just do the best that I can to make things much, much better for Ndola Central Hospital.